Honourable members, let me take this opportunity to welcome all of you who are present. I want to extend my greetings to the Honourable Speaker of the Legislature, Honourable N. N. A. Boyce, Honourable Premier, Honourable S. Zigalala, and the Chief Whip, uh, Honourable B. M. Zuma, and the Deputy Chief Whip, Honourable V. P. Kaluza, all the whips that are present uh, physically and uh, uh, visually, the MEC, uh, NM Sibia, uh, MEC for Human Settlements and Public Works, and all the MEC that are present, uh, my greetings are also extended to all members of the legislature who are connected visually and those who are present. I also want to welcome uh, mem the guests that of the MEC that are invited here. May we start uh, our debate uh, this morning? But before we start, can we have a silent prayer, honorable members? Can we stand up and have a silent prayer? Amen. Thank you, honorable members. Uh, honorable members, may I remind you about the rules of the legislature of, 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 of this sitting? Uh, honorable members, this budget debate is conducted through hybrid means, and the normal standing rules of the legislature will apply to the to the to the debate. Before we proceed to the debate, to the budget debate, I must reiterate the ruling of the speaker, which relates to connectivity problems. The speaker has ruled that the following measures will be adopted to try to assist members who may not be able to participate in a debate due to, due to connectivity challenges. If a member has, a pro has problems with connectivity, and is unable to deliver his or, he or her speech, the presiding officer will call the next speaker on the speaker's list so as to delay the proceedings. I mean, not to delay the proceedings. If a member regains connectivity before a response to the debate has commenced, the presiding officer will be flexible to allow the affected member to deliver his or her speech. With the, proviso, with the proviso that the member connects to the sitting prior to the commencement of the response to the debate. Secondly, we request that a member who is scheduled to participate in a debate should arrange for a fellow party member to be on standby to read the member's speech into, a, in, into the record should the need arise. The presiding officer will allow a fellow party member to read out the speech on behalf of a member who is un un unable to deliver his or her own speech. If all interventions fail and a member is still unable to deliver his or her speech and has not managed to arrange for a fellow party member or a whip to deliver the speech or his or her on behalf on her behalf that the speech will unfortunately not form part of the official record of proceedings in short if a member have connectivity problems the presiding officer will follow the above guidance to try and assist them we trust that this is in order lastly members who are not actively part of a debate are reminded to mute their microphones and switch off their cameras at all times. Also, members are requested to take all responsibility measures to reduce any background noises that may interfere with the broadcasting of proceedings. Honorable members, I further wish to confirm that the budget report for 2022-2023 of the Portfolio Committee on Human Settlements has been tabled in terms of the standing rules. 
We will now proceed with the matters on the agenda being the debate on vote eight. Honorable members, let me take this opportunity to welcome the MEC for Human Settlements and Public Works, uh, Honorable N.M. Sibia. You have 45 minutes, Honorable Member. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Chairperson. Sia bonga kulu. Sia fisa ukbingelela somlo mo umama upoise onge ko paratuwe. Usegela somlo mo baba umvelase. Premier wa wazuli natal baba uzigalala. U chief we pu sotswe pu no segela sotswe pu. Sia fisa ukbingelela amalunga ishamte tu sa wazuli natal salo e komiti. La was in a tall look, Salisa Waband, being a lele in Togo, the Miango is corner, Bonke Abandaba corner, La Paratuwe to Siafisa, being a lela, Namasectas, Aman, you sit in Sana now, La Pa Miango, and Zoksalsa Waband, Portfolio Committee, Yonke, Yaga Human Settlements, ladies and gentlemen, ladies, uh, uh, comrades, and compatriots. Honorable Chairperson, we extend our appreciation to the ordinary members of society who are following this sitting through various social media platforms and the mainstream media. We are grateful that you have taken time off your busy schedules to be with us as we elaborate on our vision and plans to make our beautiful province, Guazul Natal, prosperous, healthy, safe, and warm for all its diverse peoples. As the people of this province, we started this year with a somber note after various communities experienced flooding that resulted in the destruction of homes and the loss of innocent lives. The recent floods, more than any other things, is a story that has filled our hearts with anguish and deep pain. As elected public representatives across all political party lines, we have interacted with families of the victims, watched visuals and family members and neighbors tried to shield and save the victims. Journalists are still narrating the stories of how community members joined hands in searching of victims who disappeared during such a forceful natural disaster. Rescue workers have been working flat out in search of the victims. In some instances, they have put their lives at risk, and we thank them. Weeks after the disaster, we are seeing the outpouring of messages of condolences and support extended to the affected families. Chairperson, quite remarkably, the people of this country across all racial lines are digging deeper to the bottom of their hearts in search of love, which they want to share with surviving communities. Ours is a story of unbelievable love and human kindness. Honorable members, it is our wish that such love and human kindness be sustained in order to end the suffering of the majority of people of this province. In particular, we appreciate the cooperation of residents and ratepayers associations and other sectors that we work with in different parts of the province. They have allowed us to build temporal residential units in vacant land to accommodate the displaced communities. On the other side, we are in negotiation uh, with the individuals and ratepayers association. We have flatly refused to allow us to build temporal residential units for the helpless communities. They have declared their backyards a no-go zone despite, despite the availability of government and municipal land. This is one challenge, honorable members and chairperson, that we believe this house will help us because you've got some who are mainly in the middle class who are saying not in our backyards that you will build temporary residential units that later on will be transformed to temporal, to permanent units and permanent houses. And we believe this country has gone beyond the apartheid laws that we knew they existed before and we need to help each other and work on this matter. We are concerned about the, this resistance, which has resulted in some delays in moving, in moving displaced communities. We appeal for understanding for the spirit of Ubuntu to prevail. We are all South Africans, no matter how poor you are, no matter whether you do have money or you don't have money, whether you are poor or you are rich, we believe it's time where the spirit of, the spirit of Ubuntu should prevail. 
history will judge us harshly if we, pro we prolong the suffering of communities whose trauma will take a very long time to heal. To allay the fears, we wish to point out that communities who, are once, who were once accommodated in some TRUs months ago are already being moved to the annually built permanent houses and permanent homes. This is to say, when we build temporal houses, we are not saying those people will stay there for the next five to 10 years, but we had a, a disaster that occurred in 2020, 2019, where today we are already building those people permanent houses, hardly three years down the line, we are already building them permanent houses. So it doesn't mean that when we build temporal structures, they are permanent. They remain temporal, and we want to make to assure everyone that they won't be permanent. And there is a difference between there is a difference between all and uh, 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 the temporal structures. But again, we'll deal with the other part of all Indela later on in our budget speech. Critically, it should be emphasised that the majority of those who suffered in recent floods are impoverished urban residents who provide a cheap labour in order to survive the economic progression, this is the reality we must face. Isolos beno mtlanga na mungamelo abasalba se mchondo lo umnumza ne usbuzi gote unopala utapelo mohape kanyi nobu unye ubuholi bakona. Siza walisa ukzuelana na malunga ale mtlanga na kanyi nemde ni kasi sunok chula mabaso osishie ngukulu kuzuma la apayana ekenan. Siye temba mapo isazo kwenza ublungi so ukbopa benzi bobubi ubula wa malunga no buholi baba salba se mchondolo. Kia skataza ka kuhul si umnyang wezo kilatuwa kwa bandu. Sibonga ukusebe nsana kanyene znomo eze nzwe ubuholi bale ntlangano. Uguze le nkulu muyana mtlanje ibe nesisindo. Sivumelene uguti zo sebe nsana ukuleta itingu kubasal bonke. Ika kulgazi uma gune intlegelele. Siyango maguti le ntlangano ya basal baba se mchondolo. Isa wazile kusiza bandu. Isi wazile kusiza bandu. Abakatla nyezwe ikukula banga pezu ka 2000. Begu wazu kuti baba hamsele in siza ei funa ei fana na map food parcels kanye no guunye. Si ngumnyang wazo kilatuwa kwa bantu si zobamba ei kaza gumitlangano ka kukule ango kwa wabasalba se mjondolo i assembly. Ngumitlaka 5 June la pwezo hamba kona siyo kodu sana na basalba se mjondolo kanye na bahul babu. Abasalba se mchondolo, bango mama betu, bango baba betu, bango puti betu, futu bango sisi betu sonke. Ageko umto tanda ya ukusala mchondolo. Ageko umto tanda ukulisa ingane za keno mdenuwa ke mchondolo. Labo abasala mchondolo, abanga bandululu. Bali tinga utando, futu bali tinga utatu anjenga bandu. Singu mnyango siya konda, uti zima ba pegene nazo. Abanda ba mnyama fanele zlungi iswe iti. Jengo ba singa ba hola ba ketiwe, uguze stutuki ise impilo zaabu. Honorable members, want to restore the dignity of a mother and a father who, because of historical economic exclusion, remains a low-income earner with no hope of a better salary and decent shelter. Late on, I will give details on how we are responding to the legacies of the Group Areas Act, the Influx Control, the Influx Control Act, and many other evil-inspired apartheid legislations that dehumanize indigenous people. It will go back to what I've recently spoken about, about those who say not in our backyards. We are not making up stories when we state that our grandfathers, fathers and uncles were foreigners in, a ma in major cities of economic activities such as Deben, Peter Maritzburg and Richards Bay. They only qualify to have single beds, only in hostels such as Cleveland's, Wema 17, in Umlaz and many others like Inisikawini and other hostels in KK, in Claremont. In some instances, our fathers and uncles were allowed to settle in underdeveloped townships such as Umlas, Lamontville, Quamash, and Hammersdale, only as temporary residents. They were regarded as cheap labor, as cheap labor that helped create wealth for a selected few. This is our sad past, and we must change it. It's now or never. If we are unable to change it now, it will never change again. Compatriots, the ANC government has mandated us to change all of that and we are not apologetic about it, we are determined. We are inspired by the longest serving president of the current governing party, O.R. Chambo, when addressing the United Nations Assembly, he remarked, and I quote, we fight, also, we fight also for a South Africa whose wealth will be shared by its people equitably. We fight to abolish the system which obtains in our country today and which concentrates almost all productive wealth in hands of a few. While the vast majority exists and toils to enlarge that wealth, unquote. Further, O.R. Chambo said, and, and I quote, we will have a South Africa in which the young of our country shall have 
access to the best that mankind has produced, in which they shall be taught to love their people of all races, to defend the equality of their peoples, to honor creative, to honor creative labor, to uphold the oneness of mankind, and to hate untruths, obscurantism, immorality, and avarice. Uh, that's O.R. Tambo and I uh, unquote. Uh, if you read the last quote, it tells you quite a lot, Honorable Chair and the members. We must read it and reflect on it, all of us as South Africans. Honorable members, our work must be viewed within the context of responding to the words of this path founder of our freedom, O.R. Tambo. We are building decent homes for our people because we understand that a home is the starting place of love, hope, and dreams. Everything, everything starts from every home. If you don't have a home, believe me, it will be difficult for you to dream. Home is where love resides. Home is where memories are created. Home is where laughter never ends. And that's why as the department, we want to continue building our people decent homes that are full of love. A house is made of bricks and beams. A home is made of hopes and dreams. It's not only about houses, but it's about making sure that people live in homes that are decent. Speed and efficiency, uh, Honorable Chairperson, allow us to turn my, our focus to the issues of relief effort following recent floods. The floods necessitated an immediate response, as we have pointed out in various platforms. Funding has been reprioritized in line of Section 6A of the Division of Revenue Act, which is DORA of 2022. This has allowed one billion in the Human Settlement Grant to be reprioritized to elevate, elevate the impact of the disaster. But so far, the department has reprioritized 500 million rands. Uh, it hasn't received any funding from the national government regarding this disaster. We are just using what we have reprioritized as the government and the Department of Human Settlements in Wazul Natal. We'll show the same integrity that was shown during our quick interventions following the heavy storms in December 2021 and January 2022. No corruption was reported and no single cent was squandered when we acted with speed and efficiency to come to the aid of victims. You'll remember that in December 2021-22, we had a situation where this province had a disaster. Whether we talk about Umkungundlo, you talk about Ilembe, you talk about Umzinyati, Uku, we're all over the province making sure that we are bringing interventions with speed to our people. And not a single cent was unaccounted for. And we'll continue in that path, even in this uh, disaster, because we want to make sure that every cent is accounted for. No money must be mismanaged because it belongs to the people. Planned deliverables from projects will change to allow for the reprioritization of funds to enable our best response to floods. However, we'll endeavor to source additional funding from the National Department of Human Settlements during the budget adjustment phase. We'll move with speed and efficiency and integrity using the funds solely what they are meant for and without compromising quality and integrity. In the same vein, we are cautioning municipalities to utilize funding through the municipal, the municipal housing operating account, the MHOA, by strictly adhering to the policy and procedures. We would like to reiterate that these funds are meant for the construction of human settlements provision and service sites and community facilities and nothing else. Not to buy cars. If you buy cars using the money from human settlements, we'll take that money back to the department's account. We remain committed to working with all municipalities affected by the disaster, and we continue to receive updates on the request for temporary residential units and permanent houses for affected families. Members and the society, remember that because of all the rains we have received over some weeks, uh, some of the houses didn't collapse when the disaster struck, but they will continue collapsing even now. It's a moving target. You might have a particular number of houses that we have recorded, but as the, the days continues and the months continues, we'll find that the disaster gets bigger and bigger because some houses will continue to collapse as the structures get weaker and weaker. And in the main, it mud, it's mud houses. And we, as we continue,
and uh, uh, go back to where we are coming from. We are avoiding a situation where what a disaster that can be managed because people have been located in areas that are not allowing them to build on. Take them to the end of human settlements. Fifteen properties to build houses for destitute people, including those who will be relocated from river banks. We are also acquiring land from private developers so that we can move our people from disaster-prone areas. We have targeted Kennedy Road as one of the informal settlements that we want to eradicate, Kwamamsutu and other informal settlements around those areas. This is the aggressive approach we are adopting to, ag to address the land issues for the communities that are still residing in unsustainable, unsustainable and unsuitable areas. We are very much aggressive and moving forward towards doing something in eradicating informal settlements in our province. This is the beginning and more is yet to come. Honorable members, we are alive to the realities of climate change and its negative impact on human settlements. We have taken a decision to embark on an extensive education awareness campaign, working with the Council of Climate Change and other stakeholders. We'll focus on driving the message for people not to build formal or informal structures on flood plains next to river banks or any unsuitable land. The risk to all is very great, and we have seen the damage that can be done, and it's irreversible, and its impact will be felt for many years to come. Importantly, unexpected natural disasters do impact on our planned program of action, but we see our responses and interventions to these disasters as part of our robust delivery. We respond on, 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 on disasters, Chairperson and members, with speed and efficiency. We don't take long to respond to disasters because we understand what it means uh, to be uh, in a disaster and be affected by a disaster. Prior to the devastating floods in April 2022, tropical cyclone Eloise affected most, mostly the Mkanya, Wute, Zululand, Ilem, Beking, Bechwayom, Zinyatu, Chugelum, Kungundlov district municipalities in late January and February from 2019-21. The department, 2019-20, the department received funding for the amount of 102,590 for the construction of 1,592 temporal structures. The construction was completed and all funds spent within the 2021-2022 financial year. Mother Nature also released heavy rains in some parts of the province between 2021 and January 2022. The storms affected 14,671 houses, either totally or partially destroyed with the majority of these damaged houses being in Umkungundo district, about 8,143 houses. That's why I was saying, as the department, this is not the first disaster. We have managed disasters and will continue to do that and do it with diligence. Over 68 million rand was set aside as a relief package, including provision of temporal residential accommodation and material supply for affected areas, Azalia, Guapata, Ibumnandin, Zuzugushe, Tambuza, Guamakribis, and Cobbsville, and Inumgin. <clears throat> Approximately 22.6 million in relief packages were allocated to Ilembe district municipalities. Mandeni, Mapumule, and Dwedwe, relief packages were also allocated to Rengonyen, Mtonjaneni, and Mutu. Following my visit to Mkongundlo, Vumzinyat, and Ilembe district municipalities, honorable members, we met with residents of Mtonjaneni in King Rejwayo district municipality and contextualized the importance of rural housing development to address the Lakers of apartheid. We have set aside more than 6 million rands to assist visits victims. We have set aside more than 6 million rands to assist vic victims of heavy rains, uh, of heavy storms in these local municipalities. Chairperson in the 2022 state of the province address, Honorable Premier Sikhe marshaled all of us to work together to turn the corner on delivery. He personally witnessed that as human settlements, what we are doing precisely, that when we handed over newly built houses to the Koza and Lamini families in the, Maz, in the Mzinene and Guanampondo areas and launched phase two of the Mdecheni Rural Housing Project in Big Five Tabisa local municipality just before Sopa, phase one of this project has already yielded 300 houses because we are about bringing decency to our people. We are not about just uh, handing over a house or two, but we have big projects that we are dealing with. We have further extended our hands to local and lo to, to local and district municipalities so that working together we can extend the human settlements delivery footprints across 
our beautiful province. We also appreciate the active participation of our social partners and the communities whom we have vowed to serve to their consistent engagement with us during our project monitoring visits and outreach programs. One such visit was to Newcastle local municipality in February this year, where we monitored progress in human settlements project. These are our super mega projects. The Johnston Plow Porch and Cavan JPC Housing Development Project, N11 Community Residential Unit CRUs, and Hospital Street Social Housing Project with a total budget of over a billion rand in the northern part of KwaZulu-Natal because we are everywhere in the province. We want to change the lives of our people everywhere in this province. Another was a very fruitful engagement with the residents of Chigacho informal settlements in Peter Maritzburg in March this year. The residents are excited that we'll be building 3,000 houses for them over and above the Chigacho community residential unit project. We have identified land in Signal Hill and Lincoln Meander for these subsidies, uh, for these subsidies, subsidized houses. We noted with concerns, uh, with concern, the concerns that were raised by uh, the residents uh, in Lincoln and Ratepayers Association uh, regarding the Chigacho Community Residential Unit CRU project. We stated on the 31st March that unlike the apartheid government, which never consulted, we are a democratic government. We understand that as part of ensuring participatory democracy, we must meet the Lincoln Mayor, the Residents and Ratepayers Association. Local business forums, community activists, serving in the Red Payers Association provide alternative versions of the leadership of the local level. They provide the leadership that is honest, accountable, and consensus seeking. It is for these reasons we offer to work with them and Red Payers Association to strengthen the rollout of social housing uh, program. But we must also say it here that there shouldn't be a situation where because government wants to locate to relocate our people to a strategic piece of land, and those who are residing at a middle class uh, 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 kind of an area, and then they would want to stop and hinder the construction of those houses because they fear that the value of their houses will uh, be devalued or it will get lower, uh, and we end up not being able to honor our responsibility to make sure that our people, whether they are poor or rich, they are able to live side by side because we are one country. It's very, very important. On another important issue, the fact that housing backlog is a moving target, which now stands at 742,000 in terms of the census 2011, does not break our resolve to provide comfort and restore dignity to our people. <clears throat> Interventions through Operation Super Massacre program has been official, has seen officials and, my, and, our, and us travel to the most remote part of the province. We have reached the most deserving and poor rest of people in order to provide decent and safe homes. Homes of these once forgotten souls are built in less than a month, replacing decent and safe temporal shelters that are, are erected with agency as there are instances where their living conditions simply cannot be allowed. We have witnessed many lives change for the better since we, the very first intervention a day after our budget speech last year this was when we visited Goko Mazibugo, who is over 90 years old and lived in abject poverty in what nine year back Vilino Katamba local municipality. Her mobility around her dilapidated and falling structure, which she called home, involved her being pushed around in a wheelbarrow. News of Goko Mazibugo plight reached us through social media and we responded with haste to better her life. We promised Coco that a house will be built for her in less than a month. Her newly built house was handed over to her within three weeks of that promise. That is government at work. Efficiency and speed is what is our hallmark. We also provided the Sitolo family in Nongoma with a decent home that caters for their needs of a person with disability. We intervened, we intervened with speed and provided a home for Coco Mchalane from Ward 12 in Umvoti local municipality. Here, because of the terrain, a donkey was used to transport building material. Visuals of that work were broadcast all over the country on SAPC One Cutting Edge, where a department that can never be stopped by conditions and circumstances will use any means and any way to make sure that we deliver our people. Even donkeys are part of us. 
It's just that we didn't pay for that tender. Uh, but we managed to make sure that Gogo is able to get a house, uh, Honorable Rogers. <clears throat> As announced by the Premier in Sopa, we are conducting an, an audit in order to evict and criminally charge illegal occupiers of houses in Siasalala housing project in Newcastle. We'll further investigate the issues of housing projects in Mutu that is reported to be occupied illegally. I'm sorry. Honorable Chairperson, we're proudly noting that the department has yet again spent its full budget for the 2021-22 financial year. We are honored to share with uh, our fellow citizens of KwaZulu-Natal uh, the 4.123 billion rands allocation to the KwaZulu-Natal Department of Human Settlements in 2020-23 financial year. And we'll make sure that we spend it, but it's spent correctly. There is value for money as well. The total allocation for the Human Settlements Development Grant HSD, HSDG is 2.9 billion rands, and the allocation um, towards the Informal Settlements Upgrading Partnership Grant ISUPG is 757, around 757 million rands, and an amount of 397 million rand is ring fenced for disasters that occurred during 2019 and 2020. This is an indication that if we build temporal structures, we don't keep people in those temporal structures for many years. This was this uh, disaster happened in 2019-20, and already we are building them. We'll be building 2,500 houses for those people in this financial year. You will see the location, the allocation uh, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the speech there, Honorable Chair and the members. I'm not going to go through it, but you can see how it's been allocated uh, 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 as per the detail that we have given. The conditional grants allocation per housing intervention uh, is allocated per housing intervention as follows. You will see we'll deal with 2022-23 uh, on financials, it's 488 million. Incremental, it's 1.267 billion. On social and rentals, it's 249 million. On rural, it's 1.693 billion rents, which in total gives us 3.698591 billion rents. On conditional grants allocation per district, we'll deal with only 22, 23. You'll see that Amachu by seven is saving 714 million rents. The Cheguin, 824. Herikwala, 197. Uh, Elen, the 241, Kings, the Chayo, 202, Iuku, 369, Umkungunzo, 375, Umkanyagu, 187, Umzinyat, 125, Utuela, 182, Zululen, 278. We are talking about million rands, eh? It's millions. Uh, the total is 3.698.591 billion rands. The equitable share is allocated per program as follows on administration. It's 246.558. On housing needs, research and planning, it's 19.654. On housing development, it's 111.692. On housing assets management, property management, it's 46.933, which gives us 424 million, uh, 24 million rand, 737. It's 424,737,000. Uh, and then the table below shows delivery in 11 district municipalities since the start of this administration. This is where we are accounting members and to the society of KwaZulu-Natal. In Amachuba, the units that we have built is, is 6,079. Sites are 1,110. In Echewini, 982. Sites, 6,662. Herikwa, 69. And 2,542 sites. Ilembe, 1,430. 3, 3,315. Uh, you will see all the districts, but in total, we are at 16,538 with sites that are 38,122. We are moving. A summary of our delivery in 2021-22 is as follows. This is 21-22, where we are coming from. We are accounting as well. We are not only telling the society and the members what we are going to do. 11,280 fully subsidized houses the units that we have built in 2021-22. 8,753 houses built in rural areas. You can see that the poor are very much accommodated in everything that we're doing. 5,748 sites have been serviced. We'll deal with this matter moving forward. 
4,762 households provided with title deeds. We want our people to have ownerships, ownership of their houses. Compared to 2,900 that, uh, was, that was, we did the year before, you can see why increasing. We are not going back. We are moving forward as per the mandate of this house and the government of the day and the ruling party. 504 finance-linked individual subsidies provided and 274 community residential units built. It means the province, we're changing the face of the province. We're changing the spaces of human settlements at all level and facets. The table below reflects delivery per subsidy instruments for the 2021-22 financial year. You can see there uh, what has been done. I'm not going to labor much on it. It's uh, 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 narrated so well in that table. Priority human settlements, housing development areas. Chairperson, in order to provide sustainable livelihoods through transformed human settlements and realize MTSF Priority 5, special integration, human settlements, and local government, government has invested in 20 gazetted priority development areas. A total budget of over 700 million rand will be spent within the, PH, the PHSHDAs from both ISUPG and HSDG grants. The project within the PHSHDA seek to address special integration as well as the alignment of government spending with the intention of creating sustainable human settlements. Honorable Chair, the progress of catalytic projects that exist within the human settlement housing uh, development areas, the PHSHDAs, uh, you can see is as follows. The Johnston Blau Bosch Cavern JPC housing development in Newcastle local municipality with 11,503 units is on roll. It's in motion. We are doing it. It's at work. We are not telling stories, but there is evidence. The general plans, the National Home Builders Registration Council, the NHPRC enrollment for all three phases were obtained in 2021-22. Bulk services will be installed in phase two and three in 2022-23 and will be completed come 2024. We're talking about 11,000 503 units. Mbang and Emeka housing project, city of Umtatuze, 10,000 units. More than 30% of bulk services were installed this financial year. The department has targeted service to service more than 3,000 sites in phase two over the next two years. Umlazi the urban regeneration at Chegwini municipality. There are various phases in this uh, project in Umlazi. And a total of 19,160 houses have been built to date. There are 3,330 units in construction in the current project, known as Umlazi Part 4 and Part 3 extension of Part 4. Amao, the greater housing project at Teguini Municipality, which will yield 20,000 houses or units. Detailed planning for the first phase of this project was completed this year. The coming financial year will see detailed planning becoming being completed for the phase two and three. Due to the recent floods, Chairperson, there has been a delay in the, in the implementation of this project. Although we have seen the destruction of infrastructure, we, we will and we are up and running again with our delivery plans in Amawood. Inner city regeneration in Etewin, 10,580 units, because we want our people to live within the city mfundis, inside the city, so that they are able to be found closer to their workplaces and don't travel. The Bridge City, Etewin municipality, 30,000 units, planning for a social housing project consisting of 1,130 sites was completed in 2021-22. Construction of this project will commence in the 2022-23. In the, the coming financial year will also mark the planning of two more social housing projects with a total of 1,212. We're taking care of everyone in this province. The Konubia project, integrated residential unit project, a municipality, 28,000 units in phase one, 2,662 units have been completed and 1,946 transfers effected to date. In phase two, the tender is underway for the appointment of a civil contractor. Construction is anticipated to commence in June 22, but with caution. Planning has been, you'll know why I'm saying this. Uh, <clears throat> planning has been finalized for phase 2B and has been submitted for spluma approval. The procurement of the planning consortium is underway for phase 2C, 2D. The department is concerned 
we must underline this. The department is concerned about what we regard as the snail pace at which this project is moving. This is a presidential project. This is a catalytic project. Working with the Tegu municipality, we have made a decision as the department to be closer to this project as people cannot wait any longer. And the portfolio committee understand this so well and they've supported us to make sure that we are closer to this project. Upgrading of informal settlements, a total budget of 28 million rand has been allocated for the purchase of, strateg of strategic plans for informal settlements upgrade in 2022-23. We are also assisting municipalities with bulk challenges related to the delivery of human settlements and have made an allocation of 48 million rands to the, for the provision of bulk uh, to unlock housing projects. We must talk about uh, honorable members and single out in Kanku Road housing project and informal settlement up upgrade. It's not an informal settlement upgrading project. This is where we're eradicating all in Dela in CPing, or because we must be specific. We are doing something now about all in Dela. We are eradicating them in Isipingo. We, are, we will be moving people from that, uh, old, that Lindela, which is one of the first uh, old Lindela that were constructed in Etewin. 62 uh, houses have been, and more have been built. We are moving towards making sure that before the end of this year, people should have been removed from Isipingo and, uh, located, uh, and being located to their proper houses in Nkanku Road. The service site, this is one project and the program and the instruments that we are going to be focusing on members and uh, to the people of KwaZulu-Natal will be increase, increasing service sites uh, 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 in the province and uh, uh, investing more on service sites because our people are able now to build their own houses. They are ready to build their own houses. All they want is a piece of land with bulk infrastructure, with uh, connectivity to electricity and water and everything. The social housing project in Newcastle is gradually taking shape. The department with, with the first foundations as having been casted during the April 2022 uh, is to residents. These hostels were built in the early 1970s. We can't transfer hostels or units to individuals. They will remain the property of government because it's very, very important. I must clear that one up. There are 360 units here, 20 blocks with 18 units in each block. Discussion also focused on plans to address historical debt around flats and rate rentals payable by hostel residents, but also to make sure that we are able to renovate and rehabilitate that uh, uh, CRU project or that hostel in Yesikalin. We want to uh, raise the issue of our program and project that uh, is in Chosini local municipality, a CRU project with 1,300 CRUs. Uh, this project is in Indumo, where we will not, uh, uh, where we have constructed in fact, the municipality, we want to ensure that the, cons the constructed 90 million rands Ndumo CRU project is back on track, will not allow or be held in ransom by unauthorized, selfish and greedy groups who are focused on misleading communities. Currently, 96 units ranging from rentals of 1,000 to 1,800 a month, depending on the size, are housing an estimated 288 people in that area. A further 54 units in three blocks have been allocated to KZN Department of Education. Chairperson, we have received complaints from tenants about social housing projects in Avoca Hills. We are attending to that matter and will be visiting uh, 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 the people residing in those uh, 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 social housing uh, projects. Regarding the much publicized Alo Ridge housing project, we remain indebted to the Human Settlement Minister, Mamuloko Kubai. A collaborative approach resulted in the resolution of what could have pitched the government against the military veterans. All stakeholders agreed to work together. On finance linked individual subsidy, the FLISP, Chairperson, we must say that we would want our people to utilize this instrument. We'll be going out 
in the media educating our people when it comes to these instruments where we are able to subsidize our people who want to buy houses. It's underutilized and we want our people to know about it. On housing intervention in rural areas, a total of 8,735 8, households were assisted through the department rural housing program. The department remains intent on advancing housing support for farm dwellers. We are going to be making sure that we deal with the Chinatown uh, project in Umdoni local municipality, which is a farm project, a farm dweller project, with wilds in Rosetta in Bofana local municipality. 100, local, 100 sites are undergoing bulk infrastructure. Kokstad local municipality is not left out of the mix with 126 sites currently under planning in and we are dealing with all sectors of our society. We can't leave farm dwellers out of what we're doing. Even on ratification, we'll be dealing with the, the, the project that is, uh, 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 is involving the removal of asbestos roofing, which is uh, currently strictly regulated by the asbestos abatement regulation 2020 and in accordance with occupational health and safety act we are doing this project in Danhauser. we've been doing them in madadeni we are going to be doing some in ifafa uh, and in escort so we are indeed everywhere in the province yeah. on fast tracking on tightly deeds tightly deeds are also our focus honorable chairperson we want to make sure that our people in townships in particular and those who couldn't get tightly deeds pre-1994 and post-1994, we are fast-tracking the ownership of their houses. This is one project where we're going to be making sure that we focus on, because our people have never owned anything. We must make sure that they own their properties. They must own their properties at least. So we are focusing on that one. On housing assistance for military veterans, Chairperson, we are no longer telling stories now. We are moving with the, progress, the project of making sure that military veterans do get their houses. We have bought land in uh, Umkungundov, Umshwati area, not only in Umshwati, but in Ilov, we are building in Indwetwe, in Cobbsville, Msunduzi, Red Flay, uh, Ibis, in Umzimkul, in Josini. We are now building. We'll come back and report in this house and tell you exactly how many we have completed. We won't be talking about building. We'll be telling you how many military veterans are having their houses. Empowerment of designated groups were very much focused on transformation and uh, radical economic transformation as the Department of Human Settlements. We are not apologetic in making sure that those who previously were disadvantaged do benefit in the system of government. The issue of radical economic transformation is not an issue that we must fantasize about or that we must politic about, but we must be practical about it and make sure that we implement it. So we're making sure, we've made sure that uh, we've created 5,821 opportunities, 1,344 women, 3,220. who were trained in the bricklaying and carpentry trades in 112. Can I take just seven minutes, Chair, from my... It's a, de a skills development and skills transfer program. We are training them on bricklaying, carpentry, roofing, and plastering. It's a nationally recognized. Our people. The department has undertaken a number of training programs which has led to training. Construction methodologies in collaborating with the National Home Builders Registration Council. We are trying to make sure that indeed the, the designated groups we attend to them and they do get opportunity opportunity.
of the HSDG on companies of designated groups on youth. We have given young people opportunities worth just below 200 million rands, 192 million rands. Women, two, just below 300 million rands. At 286, disabled, 818, you can see there. And then military veterans at 639 million rands. This is what we've been doing, not million rands, 639,000. Uh, because the total figure won't give you what has been written there. We must correct that. Which in total gives us 480,654. This is yet another illustration by the province of the commitment to continue increasing opportunities for all the previously disadvantaged and building an inclusive economy. Chairperson, the department remains committed to increasing internship bursary program for the youth. A total number of 36 interns were appointed in the 2021-2022. In different uh, fields, we are proud to announce that 58 built environment students, town planning, civil engineering, architects, construction management, etc., were appointed in the candidacy development program to appoint to obtain professional status registration. This is groundbreaking because once they are registered as professionals, they will be hot cakes to everyone, whether in private sector or in government. On housing, consumer education. A total of 11,926 houses beneficiaries were reached through the department's consumer education in 2021. As stated earlier on, we have taken a decision to embark on an extensive education awareness campaign. We are focusing on education, educating people about disadvantages of building formal or informal structures on flat plains next to river banks or any other un unsuitable land. We are responding to the disaster as well and making sure that this disaster doesn't affect us moving forward in a manner it did. In summary of the Deliverables, you can see there, Chair. The, the next 2022-2023, 12,891 fully subsidized housing units, integrated residential projects uh, will be provided to qualifying households throughout the province. 11,031 sites will be serviced. This is the biggest number we've ever done. 7,157 houses will be built in rural areas. 5,700 work opportunities will be created by human settlements. Two, human, two informal settlements in Wazulu Natal will be upgraded to stage three. 200 social um, rental houses. I'm, I'm units, sorry, I'm sorry, NEC. Um, I think there's an echo. Can, can, can you correct that? Eight hundred seventy-nine pre nineteen ninety-four tightly deeds will be registered. Six thousand two hundred sixty-eight tightly deeds post nineteen ninety-four to twenty-four post twenty fourteen. This is the biggest number we've ever done, and which will be done. Five hundred ninety-four police opportunities, the one that we say people must use. One hundred and thirteen military veteran houses will be delivered. This will be the biggest number that we have ever done in Wazul Natal since nineteen ninety-four to build so many for military veterans. One hundred and twenty-three houses to be built for vulnerable groups. 10,000 beneficiaries to be reached through consumer education. In conclusion, Honorable Chairperson and the members of this House and the people of this province, as in previous budget vote, we once again commit ourselves to ensure speed and efficiency in the rollout of human settlements. This speed and efficiency, especially our immediate interventions following the floods, is undoubtedly due to the hands-on and painstaking efforts and guidance by the African National Congress, our President Cyril Ramaphosa, and our Premier Sitle Zigalal. We acknowledge and respect the oversight role of this House as set out in the Constitution and the oversight model adopted by the House, which aims to strengthen the oversight function. The chairperson and members of the Committee of Human Settlements Portfolio deserve to be singled out and be praised. We commit to work with you in strengthening and deepening this oversight function because it is the right to do, to do so. We are subjecting ourselves to the portfolio committee at all times. We know that we must always be ready to be counseled and be advised by the committee. We all accept that we are ultimately accountable to the people of this province. We also take it very seriously. We take our work very seriously. 
to report to our communities on progress with implementation of programs and plans that are aimed at improving the quality of their lives. Looking at what is lying ahead for this financial year, Chairperson, we will be the first to acknowledge that the department cannot do this alone. We do understand that we have a responsibility to create an enabling environment for all stakeholders and ordinary members of society in this province to make their own contribution. I want to express my appreciation, Honorable Chairperson and members, and the people of Wazul Natal, to the members of the Executive Council for their valuable inputs in our department. I wish to thank all honorable members for the guidance. I want to thank the head of department, Mr. Mduzung, and all categories of staff at head office and across all regions and districts in the Department of Human Settlements. The contribution of the people of this province from the different walks of life and cultural backgrounds has been very encouraging. The inputs received through our emails and social platforms is an indication of a determination from the people of this province to work with department to create a, a prosperous future. A special word of gratitude to the leadership and ordinary members of the African National Congress, Umbu Band. We have been a pillar of strength and I will forever be grateful for your guidance and the opportunity given. Lastly, but not least, I want to express my appreciation to my wife and my children. I know she's seated up there. Uh, and for the first time, I'm happy that she's here. And my extended family, I know my child is there as well. Uh, so the family is here, Babu Dube. Uh, for their unwavering, unwavering support. Lastly, I always draw an inspiration from the people, obviously, of Ngutu. Thank you for the support. And I want to say to everyone, see to Tugisa Iwazul Natal Ndawonye, Umutu Ngutu. Thank you, thank you, uh, uh, thank you, uh, Honorable MEC. Uh, honorable members, may I remind you of the rules uh, I've just read before the debate on vote eight budget, uh, that the rules allow a member who is scheduled to speak to arrange a fellow party member to be on standby to read the member's speech or report as it is for the record, should the need arise. The Office of the Chief Whip has been informed that Honorable LX H. Tongwa, the Chairperson of Human Settlements, is, is unwell. And for that, uh, she has arranged for a fellow member, Honorable Fraser, to take over and read the report as it is. As, as is, she is not going to change a thing. So over to you, Honorable uh, Fraser. You have got 10 minutes to read the report of human settlement. Thank you very Thank much, you. Honorable Chair, Honorable members, the Premier, his executive committee, uh, I greet you all. Allow me to read the risk, this report on behalf of Uslalo Waga Human Settlements, Mrs. Uh, Shlonga Madala. Thank you. The report on the Human Settlements Portfolio Committee on the consideration of the 2022-2023 budget and APP for Vote 8 Human Settlements Department. The Portfolio Committee on Human Settlements received the presentations on the 2022-2023 budget and APP on the 7th of April 2022. This was to be considered a final draft that should be approved and supported by the committee. The committee then met with the Department of Human Settlements on the 28th of April 2022 for an engagement on these two documents. This report will therefore outline the views and comments of the committee in the meeting on the 28th of April 2022. The Portfolio Committee received the first draft 22-23 budget and APP on the 29th of November 2021 in, pre in preparation for the stakeholder engagement, which took place on the 14th of December 2021. The stakeholder engagement meeting are another form of public participation prescribed in the South African Constitution and are held once per annum. 
The committee held a stakeholders engagement session on the 14th of December 2021 in the Zululand district, and the following was highlighted. The communities would like to see the Department of Human Settlements allocating more houses to the people living with disabilities, as the report presented was not clear on such matters. The department was also silent on housing allocation for the senior citizens. The department has failed to deliver adequate on disaster housing, and the problem is piling up as more disasters occur year after year. Lastly, the communities complained about the mismanagement of the housing allocation list on budget processes. To consider the 22-23 budget and APP for the Department of Human Settlements, vote 8, the committee embarked as follows. They convened the stakeholders engagement session with the communities of Zululand District, held a budget hearing process with the Department of on the 28th of April 2022 to consider and adopt the Department's 22-23 MTF budget and APP. Analysis of the budget and APP. The analysis was done by considering the following issues. Alignment between APP and MTSF, relevance and completeness of the performance indicators, logical link between objectives, indicators and targets, adequacy of the resources in the department to achieve targets, review of quarterly progress against the APP targets. In terms of the programs, there were four programs as, it, as in the previous APP. The findings, the department's APP is aligned with the National Development Plan and the Provincial Growth Development Goals. The department's strategic goals clearly state the linkages or alignment to the NDP as well as the PGDP. The department refers to the NDP as well as the PGDP throughout the APP. The department also clearly states the legislative uh, and policy mandate that is used by the department. On outlook, the Department of Human Settlements will be allocated a total of 4.1 billion for 22-23. The department will continue to provide support to housing needs, provisions of affordable houses, essential basic needs, clearance of slums, etc. To communities in need, the portfolio committee will be looking forward to the various developments envisioned by Catholic Houses. Um, Catholic housing projects. On program one, the budget for the program, the budget for this program has decreased from 261.9 million to 246.5 million. The program decreased marginally by 6% due to mainly compensation of employees, fiscal consolidation, budget cuts. The budget cuts against the compensation of employees will see the department only being able to fill posts that are not prioritized and have funding for the year. The salaries increased budget has not been allocated for the year because the Department of Treasury has chosen to keep the additional funds until the salary negotiations has been concluded for the 22-23 financial year. On program two, housing needs, research and planning. The program experienced growth of 9% between 2021-2022 and 2022-2023 financial years. This program provides for creating platforms for, for various stakeholders for discussing, debating, drafting and informing human settlement policies and provides for the identification of any skills gaps in the major stakeholders that are, integra are an integral part of the housing delivery chain, including municipalities, traditional leaders and institutions, emerging contractors, people living with disabilities, youth and women. The MTF allocations were affected by the budget cuts against compensation of employees to reduce the growth of the public sector wage bill. Furthermore, the department has six funded vacancy posts within this program, which will be filled in the 2022-2023 financial year. Two indicators were added to this program, and the followings are a few integrated implementation programs for, for priority development areas are completed per year. 
and the percentage of investment of total human of um, of human settlements allocation in PDAs has a target of 20% and the target increased by 5% every year for the two outer years. On Program 3, Housing Development, the program carries the budget allocation of $3.6 billion for the department and will increase by 11% between 21-22 and 22-23 financial years. In 2019 and 2020, there were funds that were allocated towards the floods, disaster that damage properties, the funds were for reconstruction and repairs of 2,800 damaged properties. The funds were for reconstruction and repairs of 2,800 damaged house, flats and hostel in areas such as Etewini Metro, Umdoni, Umzuabantu, Umzumbe, and Renkonyeni. The number of houses units delivered through the OSS intervention for vulnerable groups has a target of 855 and it decreases its target 222 three for 2023-2024 and 60 for the 2024-2025 financial year. On program four, housing assets and properties, the program will grow by 2% between 2021 and 2022 and 2022-2023. Financial year as the program now houses, uh, now houses cases and funding. Uh, funding. The decrease in 2021-2022 is related to the compensation of employees' budget as well as fiscal consoli consolidation cuts of 5.5 million. Let me also refer the honourable members to the report given to us because of time. Uh, Chair, the department committed to bringing full reports on the following in the next meeting, smart city establishment, 3D alternative housing, research on the impact of the climate change. The committee could not vote for the budget, budget as they were of the view that since they had to reprioritize due to disaster, there will be also changes on the budget. The committee convened another meeting after being advised by Treasury that although the budget is reprioritized, uh, reprioritized, the essence of the budget will not be lost. The second meeting to adopt the budget as presented was convened on the 6th of May 2022. Most of the members in attendance voted in support of the budget, except for the members of the DA who reserved the right. Thank you very much, Eslan. Thank you, Honorable Fraser. You did well uh, to, re to read the report. Um, the first speaker to debate is the ANC member, Honorable VP Taluza, for 10 minutes. Uh, over to you, Honorable Taluza. Please don't disturb the speaker on the podium. Please behave, uh, Honorable Dube. Thank you very much, um, Chairperson. On a lighter note, um, Honorable MEC, when you were saying, I then said to Umfundis, I said to Umfundis, Members of the executive, Abako Nendlin, uh, speaker, deputy speaker, and the premier. I'm a guest, Akona, honorable members. I greet you all in the name of the African National Congress, Umbuto Abandu. I greet you in the name of Imola Masondo Sondo. Ogwati, when it was not fashionable, adopted the Freedom Charter which amongst others committed that there shall be houses, security and comfort. Hence, we are proud of the role the mighty African National Congress has played in pioneering democracy. Honorable Chairperson, 
allow me to briefly take you down memories of my childhood. I was born in St. Faith's. And we had two mud flats that for years were not even plastered. To me and my siblings, those were not just mud flats, but it was a place called home. During the SOPA debate, I listened in pain to the leader of the Democratic Alliance telling us that he went on an expedition to experiment poverty. What pained me most was that for years, I was just like the family he visited. But to him, it was a long dream of his that he needed to fulfill, which was to experience poverty. But unfortunately, to many of us, it's the only thing we can actually call home. I do hope that somewhere inside the leader of the Democratic Alliance, his revolutionary conscience still exists and will never repeat spitting in the face of the poor. Honorable Chair, I often wish government can be able to build houses for all the millions that are still waiting, but we all know it's not possible as resources are just not enough. I know some will respond to me and say resources are not enough, because we steal the little that is available. I will not dispute it, as there have been cases of corruption reported. But I will say, let's work together to ensure that those who steal public funds are dealt with accordingly. I will, however, deny, as I have always done, that the department has done nothing, as the Honorable MEC has highlighted the good story that the ANC government has done. Honorable Chair, the budget responds clearly to the challenges posed by political, social, and economic matters. And accordingly, the ANC applauds the Department of Human Settlement and its leadership in ensuring that the lives of the people of KwaZulu-Natal are transformed, as per the manifesto of the African National Congress, which makes a commitment that says we are building sustainable human settlement that helps to transform special legacy of apartheid and build a more inclusive society. We must never forget the historical background of how we find ourselves having to eradicate informal settlements. The painful reality is that we are removed from areas closer to economic activities and dumped in areas where poverty and unemployment was to be our destiny. In search for a better life, we are then forced to migrate to urban areas with nothing. We then find means to seek shelter in informal settlements. Kachabli sage, ngongo she ukuzwa ukuthi umnyango ube nomhlangano nenhlangano yabahlali basemjondol. Siyacela ukuthi umnyango bambisane la nenhlangano ukuze umsebenzi omuhle owenziwa uhulumeni ubonakali. Sihlale sisho ukuthi enye yezinqinamba eyenza kungabonakali ukuthi uhulumeni usehambe ibange lingakanani ukwakhela abantu bakithi izindlu. Ingoba izakhiwo azidilizwa uma abantu sebehlomulile. Ngakho ke siyayesibone kungena omunye umuntu kule sakhiwo esehlale umuntu osehlomulile naye ozofike futhi afune indlu Abahlonishwa bazokhumbula ukuthi sike savakashela ezinye zezindawo ezaziwa ngolindela kwezinye zezindawo ezingaphansi kumkhandlu wasethekwini okwasicacisela ukuthi yebo kuthatha isikhathi esidu kubakhela izindlu kodwa baningi abebe sasele kule za indawo ilabo abangene ngokungemthetho ngoba izakhiwo azidilizwanga ngemuva kokuthi ababelinde khona sebehlomlile this is honorable members by no means of trying to downplay the many of temporal structures that are yet to be eradicated sihlala siphinde sikusho ukuthi akusingama akusimangazi ukuzwa ukuthi kukhona abadla izamba nelikampo kapondwa banqaba ukuthi abantu bakithi babekwe izakhiwo zesikhashana ezindaweni eziseduze nemizi yabo vele phela sasithathwe sabekwa ezindaweni ezisemaphandleni ngoba kukhona ke aba esasibanukela the government of the people must never allow the return of racial segregation the government of the people mc must fight against all tendencies that seek to reject bettering the lives of our people. 
On that note, I am reminded when Etogini municipality wanted to convert the famous drive-in into social housing unit, but the DA in council was the first to say no. Kodwa ibo gaba kufu za kakulu, bati ukulme na genzi lutu, no mawenza ganyani. We therefore challenge the DA to join the call for the expropriation of land without expropriation so that the department, like human settlement, can be able to build houses. Slalo, when the concept of social housing was created, it was to ensure that we address the needs of those who were earning enough not to afford the NRDP, but equally not enough to get a bond. We reiterate the call that these units should benefit only those it was meant for, and equally not sideline people with disability. Sia isboni imoto zgano gusho zpage zonki nzu uwe zinye zale za kiu. Loko kuskombi se uguti se kukona nabanya sebebone intu uba yoktola inda u yoklala nga manana pants at the expense of those who really need it. We are equally making a call to the department to ensure that it reaches the targets regarding this program as it, 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 it contains in their APP. Honorable Chair, the ANC as a current government that understands the foundation of a solid family structure, understanding the pain of women who were left at home and couldn't even visit their husbands. This ANC government established community residential units Lolu Siyacela ngongosho ukuthi usicacisele ukuthi ngabe lemali ikhona yini ukuze sikwazi ukulandela ukusebenza kwayo asifisi ukuthi kuthiwa kukhona imali efakiwe bese kungabi khona izakhiwa abantu bakithi bahlale iminyaka emaholo kodwa kunemali ekthiwe ikhona uma ngabe ingekho sicela ukuthi umnyango usicacisele ukuze sikwazi ukuthi abantu bakithi bangabi nethemba kanti usasetshenzwa ukuthi imali ibe khona the ANC led government have responded to entrenched spatial patterns which exacerbate socioeconomic imbalance and inefficiency and we are certain that the allocation of 4.123 billion in the 22-23 financial year will service our people accordingly. In addressing these patterns, we have assessed the unique needs and potentials of various rural and urban areas in many present special in inadequacies that will be resolved. It is worth noting that the implementation and prioritization of the provision of socioeconomic infrastructure remains the overriding policy objective. Honorable Chair. We noted the report from the P Finance Portfolio Committee that indicated almost 400 million that is an irregular expenditure. We are then making a call to the department to rectify this. We know that in many instances, we get to hear that irregular expenditure has an imp is, is as a result of fraudulent or, 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 or whatever the case might be. But we also know in many cases it is not because Imali is Liwe, but it is because there were certain processes that were not followed. We are then making a call to the department to ensure that we follow prescripts as it is written in our books. We can't then flaunt regulation simply because we want to then The ANC supports the budget of human settlement. Thank you, Honorable Member. Uh, we are moving on to the following member, Honorable TJ Kumete of the IFP for five minutes. <laughs> Um, thank you, Chair. Good morning, uh, Honorable MEC, Honorable Members and Guests. We can see that we have a lot of people who are living in the world. We have a lot of people who are living in the world. And we have a lot of people who are citizens in the world. We have a lot of people who are living in the world. 
Honorable member, honorable committee, we cannot see you. You can't see Hola, me, Mrs. but I've opened. Hola, Mrs. Kat. Honorable committee, we cannot see you. Can see? Yes. Yeah, My it's camera. better now. Oh, okay. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Sibezwile ke nabantu abadala bekhala nabaphila ngokukhubazeka ukuthi cha ababalwa kahle hle emasekhulunywa yendaba yezindlu. Yaqolisa hlalo nomkhuhlana uyinika amandla. Eh bekhala nangokuthi kunobu nama backlogs endabeni zezindlu zenhlekelele ne poor management yoku ye housing allocation. Sibonile ke lokhu hlalo ngesikhathi isihamba lapha ethekwini South Africa kunkanku road la ekungenisa khona abaphuma kwe transit camp yasesp. Ukuthi kwesikhathi idebi sezakhiwa kulendlu ngempela ngempela zibabeke eceleni abantu asebekhulile zibabeke eceleni abantu abaphila ngokukhubazeka. I feel will assess to the first concern the flats have very steep narrow and staircases impossible even to to a fairly able and middle aged to climb. A fall from those could cause either a fracture or instant death. This request is genuine and was communicated to the Human Settlement Chair in a Tegwin municipality when we visited the Spingo Transit Camp. Poor management of houses comes in two forms. One, registered beneficiaries are somehow robbed of their allocation and the keys ended, ending up with a stranger, one holds the allocation number, the other, the real key to occupy the house. Besu tola le zindu e nkulu u onarabul tali, mote nkulu onarabul tali uzate kulu mangazo na ma professionals e na wenu zabandu aba fanele nga bebe xe likona bine xe ilikzon. The 4.123 billion for 22-21 financial is welcomed especially with the thought that the department will continue with the housing needs. Inter alia, the slums and transit camps clearance, but the AFP is concerned about these allocated funds not fully utilized. There have been two disaster fund allocations, one in October 20, 2017 to April 2019, the second for 2019-2020, which had a ring first allocation of 397 million, but not fully utilized. Now an estimated 8,000 homes damaged and destroyed by the recent floods is causing a huge backlog. Honorable Chairperson, we are encouraged by the MSC's honesty in characterizing the present camps as an eyesore and embarrassment and his commitment to decommunizing them his commitment to speed eradication of 45 transit camps during the 2020-2022 financial year will fall short and our wish to see all 71 transit camps eradicated during the current financial year uh, will be somehow disturbed because of the, uh, the reprioritization of the funds that is going to happen to deal with the current flooding disaster. Program one, much as it suffered a mere margin of 6% decrease, still that does not justify the unfilling of 21 funded posts in this department. 9% increase in the program two is further welcomed as we were assured by the treasury that reprioritization will not affect the budget. IFP welcomes the 756.865 million funding with respect to the informal settlement upgrading partnership grant for provinces for 2022-23. Honorable Chair, the rapid growth of informal settlements in our major cities and towns is of great concern to us and takes the IFP back to the previously made request to have a human settlement in Daba where issues of disaster readiness, research and preventative measures could be discussed because in these debates, budget debates and in committees, there's not enough time to put in meaningful inputs and deliberations. 
the IFP commends the Department of its efforts to increase supply of middle-income market housing to meet the high demand through funds allocated to FLIPS. Only communication is needed in this regard. All other programs will be closely monitored through oversight and stakeholder meetings, that is Mbangeni, RTP project, Greater Mawad project, Tetetuguini and Bridge City project, but farm housing should be accelerated with MK housing thank, project. Thank you, Honourable Member. Finality. Thank you, Honourable Member. Uh, your thank time you. is up. Thank you, Chair. Uh, the next speaker to debate uh, is the DA member, Honorable M. Ne, for 12 minutes. Is it parliamentary or is it member of the Honorable Premier, Honorable MEC, Honorable Chair, and Honorable Members, greetings to you. Let me start by saying that success... Honorable Member, I know that you are new and uh, this is your maiden speech. It's honorable, not horrible. Uh, I just want to correct you. Honorable. On a point of order, Madam Chair. Honorable Speaker. Madam Chair. Yes. Uh, on a point of order, I don't think it's your place to correct the language used by the member. And also, I don't think it's conducive to uh, interaction for the member as a maiden speaker to be heckled by the ANC. Uh, Honourable, uh, Honourable Rogers, I'm, 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 I'm the one who's, who's in the, on, on the seat. I'm, I was just correcting the member because but she but is but new. But I'm, but I'm, but I'm, I'm, I'm and then, please, uh, Honourable member, just call me Honourable member. Thank you. You may proceed. My apologies, Madam Chair, if my pronunciation came across as horrible. But let me start by saying that success is relative. Allow me to explain with an example. If there is a need for, say, one million houses to be built, and this department sets a target of, say, 5,000 houses to be built, and then goes ahead and builds 6,000 houses of very poor quality, this is nothing to celebrate. And it's something that this department needs to keep in mind. Now, with such a great need for housing and such huge backlogs, one would imagine that every cent would be put to good use in the delivery of houses. However, this has not been the case. In 2019-2020, 50.4 million ran of the Provincial Emergency Housing Grant Funding for floods in 2017 were still unspent. And in 2019-2020, an allocation of 86.4 million ran for 2018-2019 storm was underspent. Now in 2022-23, we have an allocation of 397.7 million ran for damages to houses caused by flooding that took place in 2019 and 2020. You get the picture. We really have to find ways to spend emergency funds during the emergency and not years later. Today, exactly a month after the devastating floods, people in areas like Yellowwood Park and Reservoir Hills are still waiting for emergency housing. In the Etiquini Metro, the epicenter of the floods, many are still waiting for someone to come and assess the damage to their homes. Sadly, there has been a lack of information and leadership during a time of great distress. Honorable MEC, now that we have heard that there won't be one billion rand immediately sent to KZN, what is the plan? Reprioritizing our already tight budget 
would stall the delivery of houses even further. As it stands, a person will have to wait at least 100 years to get a house. Unless, of course, they are politically connected, like the military veterans whose ID numbers start with nine. My apologies, that's a bad example. Even the MK vets are not having much success getting into houses. Now let us talk about planning for disasters. From what we have experienced in the last few years, it's obvious that flooding is going to be the new normal for us. Is there any research being done on building for storms? We should be looking at international best practices in this regard and implementing what we learn. Research and innovation must be prioritized. The destruction of environmentally protected groups Green spaces being replaced by shacks is having a devastating impact on climate change. This must be taken seriously. Honorable MEC, I speak on behalf of the people of KZN when I say we are concerned and ask, what is the human settlement disaster plan? How do you plan to prevent as well as prepare for future disasters? Let's move on to transit camps. Honorable MEC, the Premier has vowed to eradicate all existing transit camps by 2023. What is your plan to accomplish this goal? Now, I was pleased to see the MEC delivering the first TRUs in Moweni. Well done on being hands-on and on the ground. I believe that 96 temporary houses were required in this area, and so far you've delivered six. How long before the other 90 arrive? And the million rand question. How long before the same residents will be provided with permanent housing? Not too long ago, the, the leader of the DA, Honorable Rogers, spent two nights in a transit camp in Le Monville, where there were two toilets for 2,000 people. I don't believe that there are any honorable members here today that would go and spend a night in a transit camp. Perhaps you've come from there before, but you wouldn't choose to go there now. Where people were meant to be in a transit camp for approximately 6 to 12 months, some are still there for up to 20 years. We must eradicate all transit camps and restore the dignity of our people with proper housing or housing opportunities. What you must not do is insult the intelligence of these people by feeding them lies and giving them false hope that they will soon get houses when in reality, your budget and poor planning does not support the eradication of transit camps anytime soon. It has been said that true success is not in celebrating one's achievements, but in identifying one's failures and acknowledging them and overcoming them. Informal settlements. There are over 600 informal settlements in the Itaqueni Metro alone. And from these settlements, Many have lost their lives. African National Congress, their blood is on your hands. Why were they allowed to build on dangerous floodplains? Why were they not stopped by the city's land invasion unit? How did so many informal settlements come up under the ANC-led city's watch? Perhaps stopping them would, would not have been politically beneficial. The informal settlement upgrade partnership grant will never be able to adequately address the issue of ever increasing and enlarging informal settlements. Rising unemployment has led to the rise of shack laws that constantly add to the existing settlements. Informal settlements need to be contained. Shacks need to be numbered. There needs to be some land invasion legislation in place. Now, around 2017, the Democratic Alliance in the Etiquini Council put forward a motion requesting additional budget for the city's land invasion unit to be able to work longer hours and have more manpower to better deal with land invasions. This motion was sadly not supported by the ANC. The time to play politics and also work in silos has gone. This department must be aware of what is happening locally and how it is affecting the work that we do. I keep hearing that informal settlements are the legacy of the apartheid spatial planning. Perhaps that's true. 
But what has the ANC done to rectify it? In the last 28 years, the number of shacks in urban areas has shockingly increased. We are about two years away from three decades of democratic governance. What will you celebrate? Honorable Premier and MEC, will it be under your watch that a turnaround is made? Or will the Democratic Alliance need to take over to bring the turnaround? This department must work together with economic development to ensure that there is economic development nearby every housing project. Now, last week, I visited the Lacey Road informal settlement in Sydenham. And what I saw there shocked me. Sewer ran down alongside the shacks. Most shacks had no windows and were dark and filled with a stench of filth. I met a young man there who, just fin who had finished school and had went on to complete his diploma in marketing and was looking for a job. He had spent most of his life there. Honorable MEC, do you think that this is the kind of life that our freedom fighters envisioned for the people of KZN? Let's move on to irregular expenditure. This department has requested condemnation for 413 million rands of irregular expenditure, approximately. Only 18 million rand was approved for condemnation. 350 million rand was rejected because there had been deviation from the normal SEM competitive bidding processes. The forensic investigation report indicated that those transactions were subject to fraudulent, corrupt, and criminal activities. What was done to officials that were engaged in this, in this criminal activity? This culture of corruption must not be tolerated. Let's take a look at an example. In 2018, in the Etiquini Metro, 246 million rand was spent on remedial measures undertaken on the, on the R293 housing project. The city went ahead and spent this money rectifying the poor workmanship with the understanding that this department would reimburse them for the spend. Here is, here is how they were reimbursed. The National Department of Human Settlement set aside an amount of 40 million rand of human settlement development development grant allocated to the Etiquini Metro annually for six years for the repayment of the R293 housing project debt. Because of the municipality turning a blind eye to the shoddy workmanship, the delivery of houses was set back by 246 million rands. What consequences did they face? Honorable MEC, we cannot allow this trend to continue. Were those companies and their directors blacklisted? What consequences do they face? Let's look at the EPW integrated grant. Now, it's disappointing to note that the EPWP integrated grant has been reduced to 6.4 million from 7.1 million. We must make a concerted effort to use every cent of this budget. Every opportunity to create work for people must be seized. And then on to a transparent housing list. I know of people who are still waiting for a house for 50 years. There are some that are disabled and still remain without a house for many years because they are unable to come up with a bribe to secure them a house. Word on the ground is that for 5,000 Rand, you could get the keys to a house meant for disabled people. And then in an area called Marin Ridge, west of Durban, where there's been a number of housing related protests that I'm sure you've heard about. There are at least four generations sharing a two-bedroom flat. This is the same scenario in many areas across the province. Nobody knows where they are on the list or whether there really is a list. There needs to be an open, transparent list with a digitized application system so that anybody can apply and at any given time be able to view their position on the list. Why would this department not want a transparent list? And finally, I'm reminded of the writer's words in the book of Proverbs that says, do not withhold good from those to whom it is due. When it is in your power to act, you must act. Honorable MEC, you must act swiftly to put KZN well, Human Settlements Remember, housing your order. Time is up. Thank you. <laughs> Oh,
Honorable P. P. Hendrix, a member of the of EFF, is going to debate for for nine minutes. Honorable Thank member, you. please can can you not converse aloud uh, in the house? Honorable uh, P. P. Hendrix, we have got nine minutes. Over to you. Great. Thank you, uh, Honourable Chair. Greetings, Honourable Chair, Honourable Members, Honourable Premier, colleagues, members of the diplomatic corps, and fellow citizens. As a member who serves in this Human Settlement Portfolio Committee today, in yet again difficult times we are facing and mourning those lives lost due to the pandemic and national disaster, we send our heartfelt condolences. The priorities in this community, in this committee, our provision of houses across different housing schemes, ensuring security tenure, achieving special transformation through improved integrated settlement development. Amongst all, it's doing away with the consequence of poverty, such as lack of shelter. The Department of Human Settlement is again in the forefront due to the national disaster whilst coming from the lockdown. It's of such gratitude on the support given and to prioritize again on the funds for both the pandemic and the national disaster. The Assembly, um, Honorable MEC for Abashali Osim Jondol, will be of restoration to Abashali indeed. The eradication of mud houses is of such happiness to the historically disadvantaged individuals. Oversights on compliance and accountability and improved input, inputs over departmental plans, budget performance and resolution implementation are composed and again said to be composed. Our province is still in a time of cautionary, a time that is best not to take risk, a time to follow through and carry out a plan without deviation. I stand to welcome and express gratitude on programs underway and previous stakeholders' involvement slash engagement and responses on legislative business. The EFF notes the budget. Thank you. Thank you, Honorable Member. Uh, the next speaker to debate is um, uh, an ANC member, Honorable ZLI Tele, for 10 minutes. Who are these people? Because it's a, it's a maiden debate, so it's a maiden debate. So it's a maiden debate. So it's a maiden debate. So Umpati is always a shallisaw bandu, or some peggy lay or babos beer. In Toro Yom Yango, Umnum, Umnum Zanu Zungu, E. Timbales, the Sabins, the Zum Yango, is a camuzi, the Sifundas with Sagit, Monsieur Binalil. Sashangana Emova was a cat, a sibiga cool, Lem Landwini, with Sifundas with Lapos Bonnet Corner, Ogungena was in Vula Zimbi, as Bula Abang apezu wa makulu amani. Intake lele yenze gegwa zulu natali. Kota iti ndega kulu itolopa gazi letu itiku. PNC itumela mazo kututuza iminde ni yonke e ashiwa izi sobo kule ntake lele. Kani na mazo yugu kenisa labo abafuna na namtlanje izi sobo zao. Tushungu kukolwa na intizi yo etembe gile uguti. Unkulu nkulu angenza gonke. Nekebo lake lingevi injwe. Naguso le sisikati esi bigangal. Si abonga msonisho. Usbia. Ngowe tulela abantu bagiti inkulumu eifa. Ne inkomba yoguti. Umyanga ufisa yugu sasa labantu bagazulu natali. Libuge kekanjani. Eh, <coughs> Gusuge la manje. Special injustice and urban residential segregation represents significant dimensions in the historic development of the settlement patterns of South Africa's urban poor which have strong links to colonialism and apartheid. A myriad of political, economic, legal, and social uh, uh, factors contributed to the legacy of spatial injustice and socioeconomic exclusion that characterized contemporary towns and cities. 
as the ANC took power in 1994, guided by its document, Ready to Govern. It contextualized its response under the narrative of the 1995 Freedom Charter and later translated its views in the constitution of the land. This is encapsulated in the section 26 under the Bill of Rights. Namhlanje kulenkulumo sizobuka uhlelo oluyinjini yomnyango uhlelo number 3 okuyilona umnyango kumele ugijime ngalo ukwenza ngcono izimpilo zabantu bakithi yilo le program eumgogodla wokuphumelelisa umbono womnyango loluhlelo luqukethe amathuluzi eh ahlukene ukuba liqhubeze phambili umbono wenhlangano yethu i ANC Sibala Lapo EPWP Integrated Grant for Provinces, HSDG, ISUPG, and PEHD. Naguba Ushelo, Resitatu, Lubuya Ranjalo, Lunginaso Isimo, Sizo, Logusiz, and Enga, Yoguesha, Wenyuga, Koshelo, Human Settlement Development Grant. Kota umnyango ya kubega ukusege langalo e, imizamu yogufugula abantu bagiti ogwe e, egwe selwin. Nasa nende selwin. Under Program 3, the department increased its indicators from 16 to 24 um, for the 2022-23 financial year. There are two new indicators and all, they are also brought back some of the indicators that were omitted by the previous uh, two years of the APP. The department added two new indicators that are expected to perform in the 2022-23 financial year, and they are as follows. Number of houses units delivered through the OSS intervention for vulnerable groups has a target of 855, and it decreased its target to 123 for 2023-24 to 60 for the 2024-25 financial year. Number of houses, units delivered by households affected by the 2019 previous disaster has a target of 2,224 for the 2022-23 financial year and increased to 2,656 for the 2023-24 financial year. Housing development spend was high in 2019 um, to 2020 due to funds allocated to the department relating to the flood disaster that occurred in the province on the 10th of October 2017. These funds was for the reconstruction and repair of damaged houses, flats, hostels in areas such as Etagoni Metro, as well as Umdoni, Umuzwabantu, Umzumbe, and Rengonini. In the year of 2020, in the year 2020-21, the decrease was mainly due to the budget cuts to the HSDG and the TDRG, as well as smaller cuts made against the equitable share funding um, of this program to assist with funding the provincial response to the COVID-19 pandemic. Sisalo namalunga enzu siyagutela sangu yata tavele. Naluluazu Wuti is in Segalele as in a manjaga coolu, coolers is in Dow. Kufanele Wuti, Nalesa Sicati, Esifana, Nalesi, Lamatolopa, Enguabalayo, Angabe Safitwa is in Tegelele, Engazinum Sele. Seatela Ubom Yang on Genelele, Ulegalela or Maspala Bay to Ngoba, Jangoba Betola Imali, Kumele by seven Zisa Kula is him. Pule program three, Kulo Nyaga. Lolushelo lezikaba ezi shugene ze misebenzi ego maspala ngogwe shugana kwabo ukulekelela abantu bakithi bahlale ezindaweni ezinga basizi ukuba bafinyelele kalu lezindaweni zokusebenza nokwenza impilo yabo ibe ngcono kakhulu njalo uma sibuka izindaba zokuhlaliswa kwabantu asizibuki nje ngamehlo okwakha izindlu sizibuka ngamehlo Ogufinelela galula M7 Zini, Ezi Kolen, Ema Tolopin, Sizibua Ngamesho, Ogufinelela galula Ema Klinik. Nase kutoleni amanza, Ashanze gile, Nogutu tuwa gwenje, Nifutu uza njisikati. Konke loku, Kubukwa kusenze, Sizibuze ukuti. Have our programs helped our people achieve the quality of life? Have we performed in relations to outcome 8 of the NDP? 
Uh, our spatial planning system, well coordinated now in all the spheres of government. Lemibuzo, si pendula ngogu pega, ngogu pega obala loku, esi gufumane eteguini, esi kati, si varashele kona, jenge komiti, logu sali iswa kwa bandu, kwa zulu natal. Si salo, osan pegil, na malunga endu ganyi numpatiso osoto. Ogu hambela kwe tu eteguini, kuweze izi mbobo, ezi ningi, enjeleni, ogwenziwa ngayo inisebe nziwa maspali. Sisebenzisa umaspala ombacha, ugufunda izimu zabanyi umaspala. Sitole zinkinga, ezi bonisa uguti, imitaito epana ni anti-land invasion strategy, imitaito enga ni iswa lapayagu umaspala ombacha. Ogwenza abandu bake noma igupi. Loku waka noma igupi, kubega engo zini izimpilo zabandu bagiti. Siya sabona futi uguti, abantu, bayazi kume elanji, ukeesi na manzi, numa ganjani. Ogu bega engu peni, yogu limali. Kandi futi, sibonile uguti, iza kiwezi ningi, zetolopagazi itegu, zitatwe nga bantu abayinguzi. Ogu enza uguti, ugu lecho kwezi tingo, ugu bantu, kube yindo, ese zanjeni za bantu abambalu. Ogu unye, Esi gubonile, ugu ngasebe nzigase kwa ma waterworks. Ogu, ogu, egu beni, ayinwenye, emkoga, saliswenye, kwa bantu, njyo ngoba sazi, so onke ugutu, wonke umuntu, unelungere lugu chola amanzi, asa nzigile, nugu sala enda weni, ezi nge nayo inguzi. Ogu, ngenza, abantu bakule, pambu wesikati. Kwa onke ege luku. Which is responsible for the implementation and monitoring of housing delivery within all districts, including Eteguini, through various instruments. So, the program is a program. Ugushesha kwa shelo, logu nigezwa. Aba benge na wa matuba, ugutayeshwa emisebe nzini, eto lagala, kule mboni ya la human settlement. Ugufugulwa kwa bandu, ngoshelo ele flisk, kanyi nugukukulwa kwa simo, semi jondolo. Uguba lanji, ugufishani. ANC, ya samugela, ise tulo, sabele zimali, salu nyaga, siyabonga. Sia bonga msuanisho. Ilungu ela ndela yo. Ilungu le NFP. U honorable. Si M. Shinga. Ozo kuluma fo. Imizuzo emitatu. Honorable uh, CM Shinga, seeing that uh, Honorable uh, CM Shinga is not here, we are going to move on. Sizomfaga manga bengiga pepe before he responds manga by Ebuya. Sizogulela gulung ella ndela yole MF, Honorable S. Etako Rajpanzi, na yozo kuruma for three minutes. Honorable S. Taku, Rajpanzi for three minutes. Honorable S. Taku, Rajpanzi. It seems as if Honorable uh, Takur Rajpansi is not here. Honorable uh, Takur Rajpansi? It seems as if Honorable uh, Takur Rajpansi is not here. We are going to move on to the following speaker, a member of ATM, Honorable M.E. Pagati, who is going to debate for three minutes. But I have been informed but that uh, Honorable M.E. Pagati 
has tendered an apology. Sizo nigeza ituba kuilungu lentanga no ye a ye ANC umsonisho u EV tube ozo kuluma for eight minutes. I can get ten do la well. Imagine <laughs> Kule sabelo zimali esi tulo usotobe. No kogeata tuti le sabelo singeze safinye lela guzo zonke zitingo ne poko pelo yalo mnyango. Ukwaneli isa nukunsega ukuti wonku muntu uyoba no pashle kandela kenje ngoba isnegela ifrito mchata. Izi fiso ne poko pelo yako sotobe itate ba owe kati elimtope eshungwini. Lezi kukula ezi paza misega kulu lo mnyango as a sonny seek, Angie, no man to man to my name at Kazig. Kebazi in Pumelus begin in Ayo, Kulesimo, so Kukukukura was Simo Sezul, climate change. No Pazamisega go and go and go is the old Vigella Umkati, Ozon Leia. Loku Gutazu Guti, the corner is in Janeza, but Essinga Zenza Uguti, Lesses the Camego, Umas the Sipinda, Umyango, Ubena in Janeta Tril and Echelegile, Uperana, Nales in Zelelo, Clear Disaster Plan. Sinayo ke ikle disaster plan we mshobo wetu ofigayo. Gina ako kutaba nguguti kuzo mele lo mnyango ube na kufutu kusebe nsana nezinju la ptopo eze shola isi mose zulu. Futi bapege izi ngukugo eze nzegayo uguze lezi zipepo zingabi no bungozi esi bubone benze gangalesi kati. Kunja, kanjalo nabatuwa ninga umshaba Kumelo ba nigezi YouTube ukubaba kwenze loko. Sibonile ukukulega kumshaba kukukula nezindu. Onga ba futu mtelela uguti abantu bake mshabatini onga zinzile. Ogube, ogu nyegube nkinge nkulu ukukulega kweza kiwo. Eza kiwe etuze noma osebe ndomfula. Noma enjele ndapo kwa kwa hamba kona manzi. Isi zulu sikbega ngokusobala uguti amanzi la ilule kona apinda buye. Again, get really lapa. There is a need to enforce pluma efficiently. Ge ya chabla gengoba ngongo she ukubega ngokso ba la uguti uzogwen zisquense ngokso uguti o maspa la ba ba bega kube se kuluin uguti ugua kagua bo agube ugua ka o compliant. No magese bona uguti there is a slow progress. Umaguza ngase exebenseni is pluma koma spala betu. Umangabe ngempela benga kwenisa kona, unga siza kakulu ekteni leziki kaba espegene nazo siku wa zukulula guzo kalula. Ngo 2019 saa pega nane kukula, ngeenga zifungu vungu su shilo, esa abizwa ngo itai cyclone. Ikuwa zulu natali hapa za mesa kulu lapo umnyango kwa kumele wakela bandi zindawo za skashana o lindela. Kuikini soge njobu begile na mshanju kuti, Kuno mnyagazo oba lulekile ozo kwenseku kuti abandu betu aga tebeshle lugo lindela baya susa kona. Inga ako loko sikishayla kakuli shombe. Ugutufige wazbona ii kalo za bandu. Ega tebelbona kute ii kanana. Sebe zofiga gulu matuze. Angpaule futi na, na, nange project. E nte kakulu ya goma sinenge. Njenge komiti sehambile sayoibona. Sabona futi ntroso ya lomnyango. Ugususa, noma, ugwenza spense kwa soguti, abantu baya suga, ezi nda wenenga bafanele, e, logo sikubiza ngeslam clearance. Umnyango wazubo pezelega uguti uzo kwa kela bandi izi influ. Nokoge i project ya masinenge, ine inkinga ezi taktili nesbo nagalayo. Like i rock terrain, ina matuala, okti nguti nga pamu kwa kiwe, akripu ulu la matala. Non-performance of contractors and community challenges. Ogu chablisa oguti, lezi inzelelo, agzona njizi nto oifunda panzi, uyazbona besa uyangenelela, gendele fanele gilu. 
iloko kufanele sinqome kakhulu sikusha le hlombe ake ngiphawu lokugcina nge issue yamadayitela oyishilo lapha ngaphambili kuyiqinisa ukuthi i speed amadayitela kade hamba ngaso besiyiphansi kakhulu kodwa futhi asisho ukuthi inselelo ebe enkulu kakhulu kule mnyaka edlulile kube isimo esibhekene naso sokuhlaselwa i covid esada ukuthi amahovisi asebenzisana eh, noma akhipha amadayitela eh, asalele kamuva ngokomsebenzi loko singakusho nje ukuthi ke eh, kuyekubaleka ukuthi uma ngabe umsebenzi ungenzekanga kube naye accountability yokuthi yini edale kwangenzeka ngespeed ebesifanelekile angidluleke ngi ngilapha kancane ngibonge ukuthi uye wathinta into ebalekile about military veterans housing program loluhlelo singefihla ukuthi luyiva enyameni kulo mnyango njalo uma umnyango uqala unyathela kuba yiwo futhi amasosha ethu amadela kufa nezihonga zomzabalazo eziphinde zibeka meva la umnyango uzama ukunyathela khona ingakho ke sibonga ukuthi nako loko usukubhekelele wabona ukuthi kufanelekile ukuthi eh, kube ne, nesu neqhinga lokuqoqisana nabo bese siba nendlela eyaphambili angiphawule ngalokuthi seyibonga kakhulu department ukuthi ocwaningeni olwenziwayo the department has suggested that homes and business should be modified to help them withheld the the floods we are also excited that uh, the in, in the department is thinking of introducing improved flood warning systems that will assist in giving people more time to take action during the flooding and potentially save the lives kunesiqinseko sokuthi i department izokwenza isiqinseko sokuthi nemfula will be re remendat kusho ukuthi izongenelela ukubona ukubonisa ukuthi imfula le iyaguqulwa indlela ehamba ngayo ukuze ithi noma kufika i, i, i ama storm zafana nalawa i effectiveness ingabi njengoba yenzekile we understand again that it is important kusipluma ukuthi there the must be introduction of water storage areas by construction upstream pools to hold back flood water kuninga kakhulu eh mphathiswa okushilo kule report yakho eh noma kule budget yakho okubonisa ukuthi thina njengo African National Congress ngabe senze iphute elikhulu ungayisupport nongakusupport wena ngoba kuyabonakala ukuthi ufisa ukuthatha abantu ubabeke endaweni eyaba yiphupho ko Oliver Thambo ngiyafisa kukusho ukuthi abantu bakazulu Natal bebebhekene nesime siphlungu kodwa likhona iversi esilithola kumahubo chapter 30 verse 5 elithi weeping may enjoy for a night but joy is coming in the morning sineqiniso ke ukuthi uguqulwa kwempilo yabo kuzoba ezandleni zethu nomnyango uma sibambisene thina njenge committee say supporta le budget yakwa ANC ngiyabonga Thank you honorable member we have been informed that uh, honorable SE Mangale has tendered an apology uh, honorable Mangale of the ACDP he was supposed to speak for three minutes we are going to move on to the next member honorable MJ Mazibugo of the IFP who will debate for 10 minutes Honorable Chairperson, Honorable Members, and our esteemed guests, well, the recent floods which devastated Western Natal will go down in history as one of the worst crises that has ever befallen our province. Multitudes lost all that was dear to them, their loved ones, hard earned the possessions, sources of livelihood bodily and spiritual health and as etc. As the IFP, we join many men and women of goodwill who beseech the self-existence for his unqualified, unequaled mercy, restoration and wisdom. 
before I, 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 I go on with my speech, uh, Honorable uh, Chairperson, I, I want to note that uh, uh, Honorable Zuba has been uh, very much praising uh, the current MSC, which is good. But I don't know whether he, by so doing, he's aware that he's, he's passing a vote of no confidence of, of, on, on MSCs who went before Honorable Zuba. This plus honorable chairperson and honorable members highlighted the very serious crisis of housing or human settlements in South Africa. Linda Givetash highlights this issue in the deadly floods code in KZN as follows. He refers to Lucille Dobela, whose house was among the 87 homes that vanished in seconds when the ground oversaturated with flood water crumbled at the informal settlement of the Ghana in, in Durban. David Hatch also revealed that nearly 13% of South Africa's 59 million people live in informal settlements, according to 2019 government statistics. More than, more than actually, despite more than 3 million government houses being constructed since then, the shortfall has ballooned to 3.7 million homes, according to the Center for Affordable Housing Finance in Africa. Another article indicates that South Africa's housing crisis is described by some as a ticking bomb, a time bomb, and it grows louder in the Etiquette municipality every year, with an estimated 1 million people in need of government assisted housing. It further states that according to city documents, the Etiquette municipality has a backlog of more than 440,000 houses to build. However, between 2016 and 2019, they may manage to only build an average of 4,000 houses per annum. <clears throat> this means it continues. At the current pace, the Etiquette is building homes it would take the city more than 100 years to clear the backlog if it had to include building the infrastructure around the houses. And unfortunately, most of the backlog is experienced by low-income low households who earn less than 3.5 per month. Honorable Chairs, I wish I wish we could welcome the MFC's assurances that temporary units for the victims of flood will not turn into permanent transit camps. But past experiences, based on the broken promises by your predecessors and honorable MSC, who are ANC leaders, make us to take your assurances with a pinch of salt. Ordinary people who were dumped in the transit camps were given the same assurances. But some infants who occupied these transit camps with their parents are now adults. But the prophesied day of living transit camps has never come. Just one example. Residents of a transit camp in Guala Street in Lamontville were placed in the transit camp in about March 2020, rather 2021. They were assured that they would never stay there beyond six months. We are now in the second year. When the floods raged, these residents on their own, without any government assistance, fled to the nearest place of safety, Wema Hostel Hall. They told me that Wema residents, and even the Ward 75 councillor, because they are from Ward 74, welcomed them with open hands. They stated unequivocally that ever since they, they, occupied, they occupied that hall, they have never received any government help. They live because of good Samaritans. And among these Samaritan, good Samaritans was the IFP, whose NEC charged its president, Honorable Velikosin Shabisa, and leaders to visit these South Africans. The story is long and painful. I cannot exhaust it here. Honorable Chairperson and Honorable uh, Members, the largest part of the causes of the crisis are people who find themselves in 
could be laid at the door of the governing party. One of the causes of the crisis confronting our province is highlighted by Clive Ndoll in an article of 2 May 2022, when he says, Natala Legislature's Select Committee on Public Accounts has called for an emergency meeting with provincial departments after billions of friends could not be accounted for. The departments, which by much had accumulated 48 billion rands in irregular expenditure, want the provincial treasury to condone some of the irregular transactions. It later says the following. In the case of the provincial human settlements departments, the regular transaction of about 400 million, the provincial treasury declined to condone the amount as there was proof that this transaction could be as a result of criminal conduct by the department's officials. A submission, it goes on, from the human settlements amounting to 394,939 has not been considered as the forensic investigation report provided in the case that these transactions resulting from deviation from the normal SCM competitive bidding processes were subject to fraudulent, corrupt, and criminal activities. It goes on. It has been recommended that the, dep the department follow the relevant steps required in terms of treasury regulations 4, 5, and 12 to address this irregular expenditure. The provincial treasury said, end of the article. So one of the problems is that, that people's monies disappear in government departments, including human settlements. One of the one of the second one the second demon, which worsens this housing crisis, and is described Mr. Smooth's word of Abashali Basam John Dollar as follows: The sad reality for many of our members is that they will never get houses because unless you are close to the ruling party or close to a branch in the ANC, you must not expect anything. The promise of free houses, in fact, creates dependency on the government. And that is something we do not want. There are many people that are willing to build their own houses, but are not given the opportunity to do so by this government. And quote. That is the second problem. The partisan, looking at uh, party cadres and, and, and supporters first uh, as the ones who are more important than other uh, South Africans. When I speak at the honor of Mrs. Slogans, which are like acting with speed, which he broadcasts with zeal, are good music to the ears. To be honest, I read sincerity, 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 sincerity in the statements of the MSC, even in the portfolio committee. However, experience does not allow us to believe that this will materialize. We're not casting aspersions on him as a person. When we notice that he belongs to the ANC, then we become skeptical. Let I'm accused of unjustly attacking the oldest liberation movement in Africa. Allow me, Honorable Chairperson, to revisit history. In 2006, the NC local government election manifesto act declared that, and I quote, our program aims to accelerate service delivery so that no community will still be using the bucket system for sanitation from 2007, so said the NC. All communities will have access to clean water and decent sanitation by 2010. So, I'm so Honorable Premier Okuzeni, members of Executive Council, Honorable Members of the House, Distinguished Guest, San Bonan. 
Um, I should have started with my speech, but I believe I need to firstly advise Honorable Ne. You know, oh. Honorable Ne, you know, I'm very disappointed. You know, the surname you are carrying, it's one of my struggle heroes, Billionaire. If you know what he has done for the black majority, it's like he was spitting in his grave. You know, he fought against the white dominant. Today you are reading the statement from your white masters. I just wish you are going to be able to sleep tonight. What you did, I could see. It wasn't you. They wrote the speech for you because when you were reading the areas that are affected by floods, I could not hear you talking about umashu, umlazi. But you only mention what your white superiors wrote for you, which actually tells you. It actually told me, Guti, no, 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 no. You were just reading what was given to you. You know, and the, you know, any years in that you need to learn coming into politics, listening is a skill. You know, if you have like took time and listened to Honorable Sotobe when he was reading his speech, most of what you were talking about, it was there on his speech, but also. I forgave you because it was not you. You could not listen because that speech was written a couple of weeks ago. Now, so that is why I'm saying to you, I'm sure the surname you are carrying, you have actually disappointed your family. The homework that I want to give you, when you talk about the 50 years. Maybe one of the speeches that you need to write is to ask your white superiors how many title deeds did they issue to the black communities in their times? You must try and ask them how many they've given to our people. Then that should have helped you to understand what is actually going on? But also for just a, a small advice, please go and try and find Dumba, look at what happened to her. I see you being online also because they just don't care. They just use you. Very soon they're going to dump you. Firstly, we wish to express to Honorable Sotobe, Kumete Mkulu, we wish to express words of appreciation to the Department of Human Settlement, led by Honorable MEC and Tutuko Chomosbiya. We are very pleased of his insightful budget speech delivered. We also have due regard when we have seen him and the department dealing with the recent floods in our province. We have seen the department all over the province assessing the damage done by the recent floods and providing temporal shelter and the daily provision of various kinds to the victims of the disaster in 11 district. It is also worth noting that the assessment of damage is ongoing, though more still need to be done, as some areas are inaccessible due to severe damage caused by impact of erosion. Simultaneously, we acknowledge that quick respond, uh, responses from the National Human Settlement Department and the action for the immediate intervention in preparing the emergency grant application in line with the submission, which was made on Friday the 6th of May 2022. As the portfolio committee, we supported the department for requesting the, short, uh, the shortfall.
Similarly, uh, we urge the department to continue to honor the promises they have made to the affected families in relation to the recent KwaZulu Natal case and floods. In some families, have lost everything, uh, starting from family members, shelter, and their belongings, and had to be accommodated by their caring neighbors. Though we understand the topical budget constraints, however, repro uh, repro prioritization ought to be made within the department and the impediment it causes. The ANC strongly believes that the people of our communities should be prioritized. Hence, the funding that the department requests will allow the department to go back and thoroughly address our communities. It is also worth noting that in, in our 54th ANC conference, we resolved that as part of the important work of helping people to escape the degrading conditions of poverty, we must also improve our implementation of integrated human settlements development, improve our fight to eliminate the squalor of informal settlements and help give dignity to the people by eliminating the title deeds, backlog, and household tenor security. I want to touch a bit on developmental and ethical state. Chairperson, it is quite crucial that one touches slightly on the developmental state as we want to build an ethical, capable developmental state. The developmental state at all three spheres of government has to be achieved through the following measure, if one is to mention a few. The need to strengthen political institutions to deliver uh, on their mandate, to ensure that the state plays an important role in driving the economy and the society and building the education feeder system to produce developmental skills, technical and professional personnel. When we focus on ethical part of it, the ethical state, okay. the constitution of South Africa provides ethical guidelines which assist highly as it clearly spells out that public officials need to adhere to those guidelines in the execution of the public mandate. Chairperson, we also want to urge the department to really try and complete its organogram. Oh, 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 organogram honor, honor remember, honor remember um, there's someone who, I don't know whether it's a point of order or what. No, Chairperson, um, um, I'm rising on rule 571B. Rule? 571B. Yes. I'm asking if a member can take a question. Kubega. <laughs> Can you take a question? No. Uh, yes. a, a member cannot take a question. Uh, please sit down, Honorable Mungo. You may continue, Honorable Member. Uh, Chairperson, we also want to urge the department to really try and complete its uh, organogram, which will result to having a fully fleshed staff complement, which will ensure that the service delivery reaches our people at a very fast uh, pace. This department is one of the most critical departments in the province, which has mandate to establish and facilitate a sustainable process of housing development in collaboration with municipalities as derived from Section 3 of Housing Act of 1997. However, we are deeply concerned about service delivery failure by municipalities, and we encourage the department to take over the developer status as to cap such failures as we have noted uh, the following. Lack of integration alignment of MIG funding to human settlement projects, withholding of payment due to service providers. This caused the implementation agents not to be able to deliver and municipalities put the blame on the department as human settlement is provincial and national uh, competency in terms of the constitution. Lack of supervision of implementing agents appointed by them. Project take forever in planning stages before they move on to construction and not prioritizing well-located land for human settlement purposes. The African National Congress has always fought against uh, injustice and progression in our strategy objectives of the NDR is to build a non-racial, non-sexist and democratic South Africa and address the triple oppression of women and democracy, uh, democracy that we pursue and learn towards the poor. One is also pleased to note that this finds a characterization and expression within the department as it continues to prioritize participation of youth and women in the implementation of housing programs by virtue of nature of oppression and discrimination. They face through this, the department has spent a couple of millions. I think who MEC have read, I'm not going to read the numbers. He has given it to us. 
for youth and women respectively and appointed 93 companies. Equally, the department established a three-year incubation program, namely CIACA incubation program, and this will ensure not only training provision, but opportunity to undertake construction work as a result of improving their CIDP grading and developing sustainable businesses. So Agaba Nigamahe were like what your uh, white supremacy used to do. Uh, Honorable Speaker, Honorable Chairperson, I want to thank you on behalf of the ANC. We support the budget. Thank you. Thank you, Honorable Member. We are now uh, giving an opportunity to the MEC for Human Settlements and Public Works to respond to the debate of human settlements. Honorable M.M. Svia, you have got 15 minutes. Thank you. Thank you, um, thank you very much. Uh, Chair, I want to thank all members uh, who debated uh, the budget speech that we delivered earlier on. Thank you so much, members. We highly appreciate all your inputs, all your advices, your criticism that are constructive. That's the only ones that we take. Destructive criticism don't help us and they don't take us forward. Um, I want to start with the 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 the, 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 the chairperson. Thank you, Honorable Fraser. We noted what is in the speech of of uh, the chairperson. I'll just end there. We noted it. Uh, we noted it. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you, Honorable Fraser. Uh, we want to further go to uh, the 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 debate by Honorable Kaluza Siabonga Kakulu Tatuetu. Indeed, uh, you were listening and you are part of the portfolio committee. You do attend the portfolio committee meetings, it shows. Um, we indeed uh, try by all means to deliver on time and with speed as the department. Uh, I listened to you narrating your childhood uh, memories and I think they are the same as mine. And I think they are the same as many of black uh, young people of our age and up, even some, even today. It's only those who think life evolves around the Teguini who won't understand that Guazul Natal is bigger than a Teguini and it's diverse. And we are coming from a history that will take years to reverse and it will take years for us to change the lives of our people because the destruction was made for more than 350 years, and it's only 28 years. And people fail to understand and accept the change in economic patterns that we see in the world, not only in South Africa, which impacts in the country. And that's how narrow some people can be. Thank you very much, Honorable Kaluza. We are together, but what is important is that the very same ANC has changed the life of the people. The houses we are talking about, the mud houses that you grew up under, it's the very same mud houses that I'm coming from at home. But the life has changed, and we have changed the lives of many people, not only our lives. Millions of people who have changed their lives, where some who are coming from a particular political party, I'll attend to them as I move forward. They've never experienced it. They just hear about it. That's why when they stand here, they will talk anything that they don't understand because people write for them, and they read something that they don't understand. So, Chair... I want to further say that we will definitely do exactly what uh, the, 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 the Honorable uh, uh, Kaluza said. We'll work tirelessly in fighting anything that will seek to stop us from developing the lives of our people. You were talking about what is happening uh, around the areas of Reservoir Hills, where a member of the DA, Honorable Ne was saying those people are waiting for houses. They are waiting because some of your families are stopping us from building these people houses. They are the people who are refusing us, saying not in our backyards, saying we must never build those houses there because you believe black people must never reside where you are residing. 
So it's an insult that you are throwing here. In fact, we are talking about people that are in Reserva Hills. We are not talking about people in Umzinyat and Amawut. Because to you, life evolves only where you are living. And that's how narrow you can be. And I believe it's wrong. You must start to open your mind and broaden your scope. This is the legislature. It's not the council of Etegwin. Start uh, uh, living the reality. Uh, I agree with you, Honorable uh, Kaluza. We must expropriate land as well. We must expropriate land. In fact, uh, the system allows us, the, the, the judiciary, in fact, the justice system in the country allows us to expropriate land as well. The municipality has to work on that as well. Uh, we agree that people must not build in areas that are not suitable for building. Uh, the issue of uh, 400 million irregular expenditure, let me cover it because even uh, the, the other members spoke about it, even the IFP Mazibugo spoke about it, uh, but I'm dealing with it in a manner how you raised it. The, 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 the irregular expenditure we are talking about here occurred before 2010, before 2010, 12 years later, and it's coming today. But that irregular expenditure, the NPA, that is National Prosecuting Authority. The ones who were given a task to prosecute and investigate it have refused to prosecute because there is a letter that they've written that they are not going to prosecute on the matter. And the, we have sent that letter to the Treasury. That irregular expenditure is going to be condoned. So people are seated here getting excited because they don't have information. Even if they've got information, they want to use it for wrong reasons. They want to talk about something that will sound better to their principles. But beyond that, even the person who was responsible has passed on. That's why even the National Prosecuting Authority can't prosecute the matter. But because people don't want to talk facts, they want to grandstand. There is the media. I see video cameras there. Then people now find themselves excited. I understand. Then you get excited. You've got all the rights. But you must talk, you must talk facts. Even if you are excited, talk facts. And there is a difference between propaganda and lies. It's two different things. Don't come and lie. So that's the issue. But I'm addressing you, Honorable Talus. That is the matter of irregular expenditure. Uh, it's a 2010, before 2010, in fact. Uh, I'm tempted to look at you because uh, I'm told it's your maiden speech, and I just want to attend you and, and very nicely. Uh, the issue of a billion is is a dicky, Dr. Asni, where's on? I, there is no money that has been given to the department, not a single cent, not a rand that has been given to the department, even the government of KwaZulu-Natal. We have never been given a, a single cent regarding the interventions on floods. The money that we are using, even the one that you say you saw us handing over a, a, a temporary unit in Molweni, it's not only in Molweni. We have handed them in different areas because to us it's not about Nete Win. We have built them out of the money that we have reprioritized from our own budget. We said we are not going to wait for national government to give us money for disaster before we start intervening. In, intervening. We are doing it out of our own budget. But I know you don't understand what I mean. You learn as we proceed. You will be part of the portfolio committee. We'll take you through. Uh, Honorable Gumet uh, from the IFP, uh, you know, if you looked at our priorities, the people that we prioritize at the department, the policy. We prioritize the elderly are part of the people that we are, we are prioritizing. People with disability are part of the people we are prioritizing. So they are part and parcel. They, even on my speech, I said it, that there is a Stolle family that we built them a house within a space of two months and handed over the house. They are a family that uh, is disabled. So people don't listen and read the speech. They just want to say what they've written two days back, not understanding what is in the speech and try and alter the speech. They read the speech as is, as if there is no speech that has been delivered. So please be careful, learn to do that moving forward. It's a good way of debating. Uh, I think I've covered the issue that we have utilized, we have underutilized the money for disaster. It's, it's, it's a myth. By the way, the 397 million that Honorable Kumete is talking about, it's the money that has been given to us for the 22, for the 22, 23 year financial year. And we are told we have underspent it. 
It's the money that we've been given for 20. We've just started 22, 23, but we are told you have understand on it. So it's, it, we're dealing with people who just don't understand the system. And I think it would be important for their political parties to make them understand. And one thing that we have continued to do in this country and in this province is to lie to the people of this province. Our opposition party is so weak that it lives on lies every day. It's an opposition that is so weak, that can't debate, that don't live through facts. It, lo it lives through lies. The issue of uh, 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 eradication of all in Dela, it's there in the speech. We have started eradicating them. We, it's, there is no way that you can say we're not doing anything. We're saying we're building about 300 units in Kanku Road. And it's there. The portfolio committee has been there. And Mam Kumeke was there. Uh, Mel Honorable Melanie, I feel sorry for you, my sister, my honorable member. It's going to be a very long journey. It's going to be a very long journey for you. This is a, a province, not that, uh, it's not a province that evolves around a Chewin. Why a big province with 10 districts and 11 with a metro? With more than 11 million people residing on it. So if you come here, you are representing everyone in the province, not only Echeguini people, but also in Echeguini represent everyone, black, whites, Indians, and colored. Don't be selective. We are very selective. By the way, if you talk about the informal settlements, go to Kailicha, go to Cape Flats, and then you are saying it's just in Echeguini where there are informal settlements and it's because of the ANC that has made uh, 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 the situation worse. Go, go to Cape Town and see the informal settlements. You have even allowed people to live in Marquis. You've allowed people to live in Marquis, and we've refused in this province to give people Marquis and tents to live in them because that will literally, you know, it will be degrading the lives of our people. That's why we're building them temporary units that are of good quality, that can withstand any weather. That is the ANC you are talking about. By the way, when you talk about the issue of special patents that we are saying we're not addressing, do you know how it was done? Today, we're using the areas between, if you talk about Tumlaz coming to Wentworth, there were big vacant pieces of land that were used as buffer zones so that some of your grandfathers and mothers will have to live in peace without blacks near them. Today, we're building houses in those spaces because we want to integrate the communities. What being passionate has said, it's passion. It's called passion. If when you talk and then you become low with, the, with your voice, I'm a man. And then, no, 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 whenever we are bitter because we are attending to that woman of yours, to that honorable member of yours. That's why we are bitter. And, you know, let me tell you, we, 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 are, we are talking about Rogers who slept two nights in, in Lindela. What an insult to our people. Why are you insulting blacks? Why are you undermining black people so much? You go and sleep in all Lindela because you are taking our people for granted. And then you come out after two days, you think you've experienced the life of a black person who's poor. For two days, you come and grandstand here. That's what you've been doing to our people. And our people are, are smart now. That's why DA is no longer an opposition party in this province, because they are rejecting you and they will continue rejecting you. You are talking about the issue of um, the, 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 you spoke about 350 million again, I've attended to you. Please go and read. You were talking something that you don't understand. Um, EPWP grants was not reduced because we didn't spend it. By the way, the Department of Human Settlement is one of the departments that is having one of the top EPWP programs. Please go and understand it. I read it in my speech. I elaborated on it. But because you were not listening, you were just panicking. So read the speech. So you address your, 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 your handlers. Then you had to do it. Let me leave you there. But please be patient. We'll be OK. Uh, Honorable uh, member, Andrew EFF, thank you so much for the support. We appreciate it. Honorable Tele, we highly appreciate it, uh, honorable member. We are grateful for the support. We noted everything that you said will increase the title deeds and everything. By the way, Honorable Ne, even some of your grandmothers and fathers are benefiting 
through the ANC in getting title deeds, who are living in Shalkos and other areas, who are giving them title deeds. They were never given title deeds during the apartheid system. We are doing it in numbers. We are not being racist. We are giving it to everyone. We are not selective and being political about it. We never politicize the development and deliver. We do it to everyone. Thank you so much, Mfundis. We agree with you. Spluma has to be effected. It has to be effected. All in there is true. See, Abasus, Asmid. Masnenga project, very true. Saze, Saicha, Chanjemo, Mnyango, because Sifuni, Kubek, and the Akubek. That is the commitment. Honorable Mazibugo, IFP, you know, Honorable Mazibugo, it's so sad that the IFP, Today, we've got a legacy of mud houses in the former Wazulu government because the IFP failed to build our people houses. We are living, we are telling stories of us growing up under mud houses because of the IFP. IFP never cared about a black man. They wanted to leave a black person under poverty so that they vote for them every time because a poor person will never be able to think correctly, will always think about poverty, and then will think IFP is our savior. And people rejected IFP. That's why today they are just an opposition party. So we can't just come here and grandstand. Abantu bagiti ba kula benga na mans benga na case benga na zinda uzoklal because of inka achi inga nanda abana band inka achi izazoni ashule ngi shok develop ulundi ulundi na namsha angeli ne zinda zota if you go to ulundi wa kui logi shelinga na ulundi go to one ongo mo kui sela langos wa wu sela langos selinga na luto mo baba benga nanda bangi shone silo inka achi wa fanya na baba develop pale zinda uzo ngi pa ju two minutes che in closing please um you know. We met Honourable In closing, Honourable Chair, we want to thank Honourable Paul. Everything that we have said, we appreciate it. We can assure you that we are going to work and deliver for the ANC. Thank you so much. Thank you. If it's anybody whose grandstanding is the MEC. Thank you so much, and thank you, uh, Honorable MEC. Uh, it was a very good debate. Honorable members, we have come to the end of the debate on vote eight. And I wish to thank all of you for your cooperation and participation. Members, please note that tomorrow, Thursday, the 12th of May 2022, is a party caucus day. The proceedings will resume on Friday, the 13th. 15th of May 2022 at 9, using one connecting link for the members that will be uh, on hybrid platform. The members who will be debating and will be attending physically will be in the chamber. Once vote two debate is over, the committee of the whole house will thus be concluded and the proceedings will revert back to the normal sitting wherein the voting on the 2020, 2022 uh, appropriation bill will take place. At the end of voting, the proceedings that dealt with all votes will thus be concluded. Once more, honorable members, I wish to take this opportunity to wish members and our guests a safe journey back home. The house stands adjourned until Friday. I thank you. Right. 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 Good question, Bab Mazabu. Unjal. Boba Mina Kumaj Umland, or to Tin. Long as Kulumumland. Yeah, yeah.
ukuthi lapho phelo jithi nani sikale mlandweni 